This is my doppelganger. Dr. Gero is a brilliant but slightly mad scientist in a Japanese comic called Dragon Ball Z. His skull has been replaced with a transparent plexiglass dome so that his brain can be controlled with light. That's exactly what I do, optical mind control. <laughs> but uh, in contrast to my alter ego, my motives are not sinister. I control the brain in order to understand how it works. Now, wait a minute, you will say, how can you go straight to controlling the brain without understanding it first? We do, in fact, understand a few things about nervous systems. We know that they are made from cells called neurons, a hundred billion of them in a human brain, and we know how individual ones of these cells generate and respond to electrical signals. We also know how these signals are transmitted between cells. But what we don't know is how these cells are wired into circuits that can do something useful. How intelligent behavior emerges from the flow of electrical impulses between large numbers of neurons. One thing is clear though, at its very root, our mental life is just physics. There is literally nobody home, just neurons <laughs> switching on and off like the black dots in the simulation. Somewhere in a pattern like this is you, your perceptions, your emotions, your memories, your plans for the future. But we don't know where because we don't know how to read the pattern. Breaking the code used by the brain is probably the biggest challenge in biology. But how to go about it? An experienced puzzle solver will tell us that staring long and hard at a difficult problem rarely gives us the answer. It's much better to rearrange the symbols, to try things, to play around with it. But in the past, neuroscientists have mostly stared at the brain, not played with it. They've described its anatomy and measured its activity. As a result, the field today is rich in observations, but poor in principles. We don't know what all the data mean. But there's also another tradition in neuroscience, one that reaches into the brain and changes things to test ideas about how it works. In the 18th century, Luigi Galvani made a frog's legs twitch when he connected the leg nerve to a battery. This was not just a party trick to amuse bored aristocrats. The experiment actually showed that brains run on electricity. The technology that we have developed, which is called optogenetics, stands in this interventionist tradition, but we've done Galvani one better. Instead of stimulating nervous systems crudely with wires, we re-engineer the brain itself genetically so that some of its neuronal elements become responsive to a diffusely broadcast signal, such as a flash of light. We do this by adding new proteins to the outer membranes of the cells that can transduce an optical flash into an electrical signal. Let me show you the first experiment in which this technology was used to control the behavior of an animal. What you see here is a remote controlled fly. We've engineered this fly so that two neurons in its head that control the flight motor can be switched on with light. Watch for the flash. Now, you see that the wings start to vibrate so we know that the system works. We've turned on the flight motor. Here's another experiment, one in which we are not controlling the ignition for the motor, but the motor itself, which is in the thorax. These flies are headless, so they have no eyes to see with, meaning that the light pulse must act directly on their nervous system. A flash, and you saw that some of the headless bodies actually took off and flew away. They didn't get very far, obviously. Now, controlling movement is just the beginning. How about the stuff of psychology? Motivation, decision-making, emotions, memory. Can we gain new insights into these processes as well? How, for instance, do brains make decisions? The two flies you're going to see next have a choice between one odor in the left half of the chamber and another odor in the right half. The fly at the bottom is equally happy in either one of these odors. But the fly on top has a strong aversion to the odor on the right. It wasn't born this way. We've programmed this choice behavior in the lab by writing a new memory directly to the brain of the fly, like recording a CD. We've manipulated the animal's subjective experience, making it think that the odor on the right was unpleasant. 
So the animal is now acting on this artificial memory and avoids that order. These are just a few vignettes of what optogenetic technology allows us to do, to explore the brain in a completely new way. This is a technology that will help us understand our brains and perhaps even change the way we think about ourselves. Thank you. Great job.